So I'm planting two new things today. This guy, some kind of bush or tree. He is stuck in a pot. You see that? That's the bottom of the pot. This is the hole in the bottom of the pot, and these are roots growing out, taproot growing out of the pot bottom. It's a tiny little pot. The poor thing is uh, struggling to survive. So I'm planting it in this hole I just made. And I also found this thing here, which has an ant pile inside of the bottom of it. Because a lot of times pots have that, but. It's starting to look kind of sorry, and I don't know if that's just because of the time of year or what. And some kind of weed, I don't even know. But I'm going to plant it with this guy too. Because why not? I don't, I don't have plant prejudice. So, I already dug the hole in there. And it was like pure roots and clay. Like big, big, big roots. I chopped them with the pickaxe and then I threw them back in there and chopped up as a fertilizer. Very, very, very long term fertilizer. So I'm going to stick these plants in this hole. Oh, I filled it with leaves and raked some dirt over those leaves and I filled that with water. And now I'm going to put the plants in it, rake the dirt around the plants, water it again. Dude, the hose has a lot of dog shit on it. Looks like I mowed through a turd. These dogs eating gummy worms. Super blue. Damn. So I think the water reservoir is full in there. But this is kind of like an opening on the back side to it. Not a lot of dirt in between it and the leaves. And there's kind of a wall on the floor side back here. And this whole thing is a wall. Starting over there at my cherry tomato plant. And then this tree, which is doing great. And some ivy thing, a uh, red oak, a basil hidden under it, right there. Um, cherry tomatoes that started from seed. And then uh, the things I just planted, that bush tree thing. It's a... Uh, no, I don't think it's the same as this bush over here. And then that weed thing there. And I'm going to continue along here, up until this bush, kind of, because that's downhill. See the water flowing? Look where it's going. Stopping right there. It's going full blast over here. This plant's are sucking up all that water. All of it. Pretty cool. Let's get a close up on the plants. Oh, and look at this grass. See how the grass is growing? Sorry about the violent shaking. I have some runoff on this end too, so I'll at least want to build clay up here. But probably the plants, if I can dig, it's very close to the tree. Look at all this grass that has grown around here. 
I did throw seed down after I planted these, so you know it's part of it. But I love the water. It's my cherry tomato. It has flowers. No tomatoes yet. There's this guy. He's grown a lot. Look at him. You can see the top. Yeah, he's big. And then uh, I didn't film this little red oak tree yet, but you can see the signature leaves of a red oak. He was in a pot. And here's this bush, the original, the original thing I planted here. And he's got a lot of new growth. He's been doing good ever since I put him down. He's got his own little barrier right there, like that. And I put him in nice compost. So did I with the uh, tomato and the other guy. And then the rest of them I didn't. Here are those same plants from kind of far away. Okay. Here's my dragon fruit. He's, uh, he's growing. Looks like the caterpillars got him over here. They ate, they ate into him there and there, and they laid a cocoon. There's the worm right now, it's coming out. Let me uh, get a twig or something. Hey man, you're not welcome, get out of here. But, uh, yeah. I need some way of staking them up better. Oh shit, here's another one. This is why you gotta keep an eye on your plants. Right over here. This is, uh, we've been getting a lot of rain. We're gonna throw that stick. We've been getting a lot of rain and, uh, a lot of bugs because of the rain. Yeah, I need to stake this guy up better. Looks like he took some damage here. Ooh, sharp. But yeah, there's definitely some new growth going on there. And, uh, need some help from the bugs. Okay, these aren't my plants, but if you look carefully... That's an avocado tree. This is the growth it had last uh, spring, I guess. Every winter, these avocado trees die, and then the next spring they shoot up a new sprout. That's another one. This one's big. This is the biggest I've ever seen an avocado tree get over uh, in our yard, at least. So look at that, all kinds of growth. And then there's one here. That yellowish one is one, and then there's a little green one behind it. Two different trees, and then there's one there. So that's three. This one's four. That that one's five, and there's one over there. That's six. We've got six avocado trees. I don't think they'll ever grow to be large because we're in Texas, it gets too cold, and uh, they die every winter. But it's still pretty cool. It's just from avocados we ate. Here's the prickly pear. Not a huge fan of the prickly pear, but eh, it's kind of cool looking. Technically edible, although if you've seen my videos of that, way too much work. Someone find me an easy way to process prickly pear with no risk of needles, then uh, then I'll start eating this stuff. But we also throw dog shit back there, so not really. I probably won't. I don't want to get worms. But uh, you can see all the new growth. Previous year, I think it was last year. I took my machete and chopped all of it back behind the rocks. And so that's why we got so much new growth. Here's our ornamental pear tree. It's doing good. It was all twigs back in the winter. 
Got a dead branch I need to saw off, but other than that, he's uh, hanging in there. Oh, and I think when I sprayed it with neem oil, it did all this damage to the leaves. But that was in another video, so. Oh, and the assassin bugs are taking over, also known as stink bugs. So I need to uh, find a good way of killing them because they are bad. Also, they kill people. I, uh, I keep forgetting to read how, but they are one of the single greatest killers of humans uh, in the world, of any, of any animal. I think they're number five on the list. But here, I'm just... There's two mating right there. There's two mating right there, plus another one. Um, they really like this ash tree, and they get on it real bad. So I need to quickly find a solution. We've got our crazy mushrooms that grow whenever it rains a lot. It's from the stump of the tree that used to be here, red oak. And uh, the center of the stump rotted out, and I dug it out and planted a tree inside of it. So there's a ring of wood just under this mulch, and that's what the fungus gets started from and then it grows into the mulch and you can grab onto those mushrooms they're real hard and you can rip them out and they're fun I throw them in my compost pile they take a million years to decompose here's the radish awesome right check it out got pretty flowers they're all over the place there's no telling what's going on underneath Underneath all that green, hopefully we've got some radish growing under there. Uh, not that I'll eat them, but, you know, compost, or I'll send it to friends or something. Here's the uh, aloe vera that I planted on top of the leaves. They, uh, the soil looks pretty dry, and it is on the surface, but I think if you get down a little, it's a bit more moist, but also it's it's not compact, so I can drive my finger in there. Oop, you be able to see that? Can kind of it, it's soft spots, you know. That's not how it is anywhere else, you know. I take it over here, just normal dirt. What? No, that's the part I dug out. <laughs> Anyways, the, the dirt is like rock. Here, I put I put this cactus. I buried this cactus in here. And see the dirt? You can't even penetrate it. You can't put a dent in it. It is just that's how our soil is. It's clay. So I got these guys. Look at these pretty bushes flowering. Uh, crepe myrtle. Whoa, saw. We find out those to. Uh, from privacy. Oh, the rainbow bamboo. My mom hates this plant, cuts it back all the time. But look how pretty that is. It gets red tips on the leaves. I like it a lot. Very good shade. It's pretty. A lot of red. Red and green. And here's another one. And they, you know, they're bamboos, so it's a grass. They take over pretty fast. But look at that. Probably crowding out this bush behind it. Uh, yeah, those are cool. Hey! Screw you, you damn stink bugs buzzing at me. They fly at me too. Here's this thing, you know this experiment guy here? Well, these were roots that I planted after the freeze. They looked dead and I put them in there and now they're coming back. Look, there's an aloe vera I put in here and I don't know if it's grown roots or anything, but it's not dead yet. Uh, let's, let's see if it's got some s soil I can dig to. And this, this is turning into soil. Yeah, that looks like soil. It's still got a lot of wood in it, but that, yeah, that looks good. That looks like good stuff. Plants would love to grow in that. I think roots can penetrate that. This is something I started and abandoned. <laughs> Look at my Turks cap, my Texas Mallow. Look how big he is. He's all in his bucket, the roots are, but 
Okay, it's growing out. That's native. Sugar, no. Sugar. Don't you dare. She wants to run and bark. Look. My oldest plant of all. It's a mountain laurel. I forget if it was Ren or Lynn. Its brother slash sister, its sibling died. <laughs> the pineapple. I want to grow many pineapples. I told you this guy'd come back, and he did. That's our uh, hibiscus. Moving right along. Here's the other hibiscus. Also coming back very well. All they needed was drainage. And I get in compost too. I spread this red mulch. Looks pretty cool. Goes back towards the garden. And then I spread out these paving rocks at equal distances so you can actually walk on them without having to leap. And these ones go over to the hose. So that's nice. Uh, it looks nice. I need to do more mulching. Here's some of my parents' plants. This guy is too big for his pot. These dudes, these bags, these thick plastic green bags, they're amazing. Like, I'll need to plant a whole lot of strawberries in these things because they work. But these are super hardy plants as well. Super hardy. They're like succulents almost. But these bags, they really work. They water efficiently and they're cool. Uh, some some, I don't know what that is, pretty cool, we got another one over there, maybe I'll plant that next, this guy, this is my mom's tree, and it is dead completely, it, it died, it went too long, during the winter we had it uh, inside, and it doesn't like being inside, or the other way around, is outside, and it doesn't like being outside, or something, we kept moving it in and outside, and by the time I took care of the soil and got it all full of Perlite, it was too late, it's already dead. You can tell because the way these branches break off. See, also it didn't green up when everything else did. It's dry, it's not, it's dry in here, it's not green. It's white, and dry, so I could cut it right here and it still wouldn't be green. Um, these basil's dead. That's okay, I got their clone babies. See, that's how you know they're dead. You break them, you just shatter. Very dry. That's Texas, I mean, a uh, Mexican petunia. Also called, uh, what are they, dailies, two days, something. They make new flowers every day. Here's another one of those weird, whatever this is. Something like yucca. Pointy tips, poke your eye out. Uh, here's the garden. That's lettuce. Let me set the tripod down so I'm not shaking you up. Okay, here's the cherry tomato. And then there's the cabbage or whatever they are. Look at these cool seed pods. They look like beans. See that? There's one right there. Yeah, seed pods. I'm gonna get seeds. There's a the basil here. It died. That, there's the basil, there's the pepper, that's the purple banana pepper. This one back here is the hot banana pepper. And then we got more of these dudes with the beans coming off of them and some lettuce. Lettuce in the back. My chard. My chard has been like producing leaves, but they get eaten up. Oh, it's caterpillars too. Look at that. Poor thing. So I could juice that. But yeah, a bunch, a bunch of basils over here. When I plant them too small, well, if they're loaded to ground, they, they get extra bad bugs. But like this one. That basil is, I cut it too short when I made the cutting. It grew roots, but it has nowhere to grow from, and it's just, it's never gonna grow bigger than that. It'll just die. 
But uh, these other bases, like, they're all so eaten up. That's a big leaf though, right there. It's all eaten up by uh, caterpillars. Now I'm eating it. Compost pile. Oh, look at that. Look at that! This plant here is called Witch's Fireworks. Or Witch Fire, I think. Something like that. Witch's Fire. It smells like cotton candy. I'm gonna go see if it still smells like that. But that's why I bought it, because it's, it's got flowers that smell like cotton candy. I'm gonna pull it out of there and plant it somewhere or something. I don't know. Give me a minute. Oh, I got something sticky like sap or blood or something on. No, it's too sticky to be blood. It's uh, I don't know what that is. I got something sticky. My fingers and I touched the power button on the camera. Ugh. That's all like in the power button. Anyways, here's that plant again. And it uh, it looks really cool. It's just pretty blue green. And it's got these pink flowers, and this flower is kind of messed up, but it does smell like the cotton candy, which is uh, just the best smelling flower ever. Right up there with mountain laurel and uh, lavender, but maybe better. Oh, and this this sugar cane, very cool. Once it's big, and you know real big then I'll have to buy one of those $500 juicers I think that's how much they were, there might have been more to juice sugar cane once I have a forest of this stuff on my own property because it'll be years from now here's the other compost pile I turned these not too long ago saw a big snake too not super big but a couple feet it's like a baby garter snake that's hackberry back there I love hackberry Pissed me off when those people chopped it down. We have a big one right there. See him in the center? That's hackberry. Someone chopped him down. I've never seen it produce berries before. Oh, there's one of those cool bees. I think it's called a wood bee. Gosh, there's no way the camera's picking this up. Did I get him? Hold on. See him? Oh, 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 the car scared him. See him? <laughs> they move funny, but they're cool. They look cool. Um, I think they like, they live in wood. Little holes in wood. Here's this guy, I forget what it's called. The vine that I almost killed. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're almost on. Longest video ever. Here's my apple trees. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, I think. Here's some more of those hanging bags. I tell you, they do amazing. But I guess it might just be the plants, because look, it's in this crappy little clay thing with hardly any soil, and it's still doing amazing. Here's another one of those trees, bushes, whatever, that I planted out in that corner. And my first thing I planted with leaves under it. That's a hackberry, and those are the Mexican petunias, and there's a prickly pear cactus mixed in with them. Ugh. More Mexican petunias. Um, what's this guy called? I don't know. My parents are always talking about this one. Um, hey, hey, this is what I've been working my way over to. Ah oh, man, look at these bugs on my lettuce. Oh, I know. See him? I got that on another lettuce plant too. But hey, check it out. This is the coolest thing this season. Boom! Isn't that a delicious looking strawberry? It's so shiny. 
And here's another one. They're all like deformed. But damn. Shiny. This one, I think I eat this one. Look at that. A little bit of a little bit of bad stuff going on there. Just a little. <laughs> my hands are covered in dirt. I shouldn't be using my fingers to clean it off. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, that's good. It's a good strawberry. I need to plant a million of these. So that's the beauty of gardening. You can turn this You know, this isn't the best soil. Oh, I could have nibbled a little more off of that. <laughs> you turn it into food. Delicious food. I think we're going to have to eat this one too. Yeah, this one's ready to go. I'll come back after I eat this one. Oh, oh, my camera turned off. I don't know when. I counted like six strawberries, maybe. You know, counting little baby things. So, yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, yeah, gardening's fun. Everybody should go get a whole bunch of strawberry plants and put them all over the damn place. Oh, a note on that. Growing strawberries. Right now, this is kind of shitty soil. Uh, I tried mixing sand in it to fix it, but it wasn't sharp sand, so it made the problem worse. I mixed wood with it, which is a bad idea. A whole bunch of stuff. It's, it's bad soil. But, they're tolerant of bad soil. This is a lettuce, by the way, so don't look at that. <laughs> they're tolerant of bad soil. They're tolerant of getting too much water, but you don't want to leave them soaking. I never water this. I have not watered this once. Except for me when I first planted it. Which is always a good idea to water when you first plant something. But here's the key point. This is what this is the one thing for strawberries. Look at where they are. Against the fence. Sun comes from up around there. And then it goes up and over and down and around here. Around here maybe point is, this is a very low amount of sun, this location, because it's against the fence. I, I don't know if that helped it. Really, you should just read, you know, how much moisture, hardy zones, you know, for freezing, um, the sun, the amount of sun. And we're in Texas. I think most plants like having less sun. Yeah, that's it. I'm done. Thank you for watching. Sugar, you look ridiculous with those gloves on your head. You can't take those off? Huh? You camera shy? Hey. Hey, Shug. Shug. Ooh, who's the camera shy, Kali? You got gloves on your head. You got gloves on your head. Well, you got gloves on your head. You can take those off, huh? You sugar, you sugar log. You log of sugar. Who's your fatty? I'm gonna get you now. Who are you? You, you, you big dog. You a big fatty dog. You big fat dog. Shit. Now you're wagging your tail.
This is a common sight. We have a wild dingo lamb on the human couch. With her belly up in the air. She's got her feet sticking straight up. All stretched out. She tries to go to sleep while you rub her belly. This is what the ferocious animal turns into at night when she's tired. Look at how silly you are. <laughs> You're just silly as can be.